Ah, I'm recording now. Sweet. Um, I posted it in research. Yeah. I think Craig mentioned this in last week. This solution. Really good, actually. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> I'm sharing my screen as well. I can point at a few things while, while I'm dribbling. Yeah. This ABC article gives us a ton of uh, like context, I guess. Yeah, it does. Like, a whole heap of shit we can draw on to say why it's important. So what's the, like, what's, what's our scope that we're going to go for? Who, who do we want to solve? the internet connectivity problems for. Yeah. Well that's it. It's it's so broad. Yeah. Well, I think so I think it needs I think it, it I think it needs to be broad. Like I think rather than just picking a community that gets the attention, it needs to be a solution that we can cheaply implement and place yep. in all communities. I so, think there's like seventeen communities. 16, 17. it was, I'm pretty sure. 16? In my scope, I found 17. You found 17? Okay. You might yeah, be yeah it, was, it was up around then. Yeah. And yeah. so is is that what we're going to focus on? Like those communities and not, a, say, the rangers when they go out to do their, their side of things? Or, um, well, yeah, what we need to look at, right, is what is the internet going to be used for? Like, you know how we spoke about yeah. businesses coming in to use like, yeah. they need internet so they don't want to come in? Yeah. So we need to look at where those businesses are actually going to be situated. And you're more likely, I'm assuming it's going to be more central. Yeah, in, it'll, in, it'll in be the main town. It'll be the main street. So most small communities up there have one main street, and pretty much all the businesses and government facilities are on there. The government, yep. the, like the local government councils, they already have their uh, IT and communication systems implemented, uh, there, okay. and they're usually they're usually pretty intense. But that's Can that's we look the at benefit. What they are of, using? Is that possible to look yeah, at? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that they're using because I've, oh, I've put okay. stuff in yeah. for those. I've put stuff in for councils. Not in Cape yeah. York, but in um, sort of mid mid Queensland, mid North Queensland. So is that the, like the communities where the people up there live most of the time or is this where they go when they want to live off the land type thing? You know how like the... The design brief was saying that uh, this was all focused on getting people back living on their land and developing infrastructure for their land. It is, but the the God honest truth is the infrastructure has never been there even prior to them going back to land. Like there's just yeah, you know, it's it's one of those areas, and and I'll sort of explain why it's been a dead zone for for as long as it has. Uh, and yeah. why the technology moving forward isn't necessarily going to fix it because the faster our internet goes the less distance we can broadcast it 
yeah, yeah. So that's like the trade-off we need to look at. We I mean, were looking at faster speeds, or do we want the broader range? We need to, do we need to look at want broader uh, range. Yeah, you just I'd assume so too. I but, assume. Yeah, broader range, to but lower at... latency. The latency, the latency is the main issue moving forward for for anything because technology technology doesn't operate on latent communication systems. For instance, yep. if, if you plug an Xbox, for an example, into an MBN SkyMaster satellite system, uh, this the Xbox doesn't even know if it's connected. Because it sends a yeah. ping to say, am I connected? And because it's a 600 millisecond return, it just assumes okay, that it's, it's not connected. Slow. Yeah. And so it disconnects and tries to reconnect again. Uh, and okay, it's the it's same thing. Repeat. Yeah, it's the same thing. Has anyone here ever used a satellite phone? Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're fucking awful. Them. Like, it's... You know, a really good satellite <laughs> phone that you pay $1,000 for is okay. But you yeah, ask your question... a little more than a thousand bucks. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah, I, I can imagine that what the rangers up there are rocking around with aren't gonna aren't gonna I, cut the mustard. If if I could guess, uh, as I said, I haven't specifically seen it, but if I can guess based on the information I've seen, it's satellite that's then converted to maybe a low LTE frequency, and then basically directional antenna to pick it up. There might be some omnidirectional stuff up there, but I doubt it, just because of the power consumption of an omnidirectional broadband antenna. And isn't isn't that why CFAT though have those uh, like mobile phone hotspot things that they yeah. build up? One there? User, yeah, one user yeah. can use it at a time. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's another think, option we could do. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking that's something that we can probably look at and increase the usability. So we can yeah. increase it from one user at a time to multiple users at a time. Does that uh, fall I've, under our design I've, element yeah, though? Or was that the other one? No, that's, that falls under our design element. Because it wasn't that 2.8. 2. It covers 2.4 as well. Yeah, it covers 2.4 as well. Yeah, right. Uh, providing yeah, that... Yeah. He mentioned that as well, where a specific design, it's like better if you're able to delve into other, yeah. like other points as well. Yeah. All right. Then and that he, sounds like a good way forward. Did I mishear him? Yeah, he did. He did? Yeah. Uh, no, he did bring it up. So back in, oh, I think it was about 1996, uh, Australia started rolling out fiber optics. Um, they rolled it out for about 15 years. It cost billions of dollars, and it's all lying under the ground, useless and unused. Because Australia is just awful at implementing technology. They always have been. It's why the MBN was yeah. such a fuck up, you know. And and there's so many fine details that I won't bother going into with the MBN because we'll be here all night. But they've tried several times, and there's fiber optics running all the way to the Cape. Like all the way to the tip, and yet none of it can be used because it was never spliced and combined as it was connected. So they just laid it with the intention to splice it, which became impossible. So when MBN started rolling out, one of the biggest budget issues that they came across was they couldn't use the existing fiber optic system that had been laid because it hadn't been laid by communications technicians, it'd been laid by road workers. So they ended up having to redo it and, and lay their own fiber optics. So, so that fiber doesn't exist anymore? No, it exists. It's, you just can't it's, use it. It's yeah. just buried underground. Yeah. It's it's one meter underground. Uh, occasionally some farmer will run a trencher through there and dig it up and panic and that's okay. No need to stress. <laughs> but you'll see those little yellow signs, especially around creeks up there, where there'll be a little yellow sign that says fiber optics running through this area. Um, and it's fiber optics that's not even being used. Just yeah, right. 
just so sitting. So if, if it's been there for that long and it's that degraded, then it's not. Oh, it's no, it's tap into. so it's not that it's degraded. It's that it's yeah. now impossible to splice and combine the signals. Because we're talking about a fiber optics cable that's an inch thick with 20,000 fibers inside that were never marked and basically just curled up, stuck in a pit. And they're so far away from each other that you can't stand on one end and test it and then splice the other end and connect it to your system. So they end up just pulling it out and replacing it. Um, The same thing with TV antennas. Uh, If you guys are looking at my screen... I'll bring out a coverage map of, and this is Telstra. Now you go always go with Telstra when you're checking for mobile phone signal, because they they have the best. They yeah. have the broadest. Now, if you look at Cape York, as you can clearly see, there's just nothing there. So, yep. <laughs> so the reason, that, that, the reason that's you, black spot too. yeah, but if you look at all of Australia, there's lots of black yeah. spots. <laughs> You know, yep. um, the Northern Territory, Cape York just isn't important enough for the rollout. You know, it's just it's not going to happen. And of course, now they're rolling out 5G. So as you can see with the purple spots, they're just starting again. Now, one of the benefits to that is that they get leftover 4G. When they upgrade to 5G, they have leftover 4G equipment. That 4G equipment ends up getting transported to black spots and they end up implementing it via contractors and so the contractors put up the tower but as i I don't know how much you guys know about lte and phone service the back when it was a 2g system you only had to put up one tower every 250 kilometers and then you could get a high speed microwave link between those two towers and you're fine when they brought out 3g they halved that to 75 kilometers so every 75 okay. kilometers, they had to go put up a tower. When so because it's a higher frequency? It's a higher frequency, so you end up with latency yeah. over longer areas. So it's high-speed microwave, and then 4G LTE, kind of, kind of LTE, broadcast off the tower. Uh, when they brought out the MBN, they linked the bottom of a lot of the phone towers for fixed wireless, and they linked them with fiber optic systems. Um... So now the towers, a lot of towers across, you know, they, those green dots that you see are actually linked by fiber optics, which is great. And it's why we can have 300 Mbps on 5G with less than three second millisecond pings, which is awesome. But now we're halved to less than 20 kilometers per tower. So they're not going to put up more towers. In those black spots, we will be well and truly in the grave and and pushing daisies before the black spots across Australia are ever truly fixed by towels. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. But we have got Starlink, and that's going to change things. But it's not here yet, and I'm, I, I don't feel comfortable, you know, using the Starlink system as part of our project. I mean, if you guys yeah, decide to... Yeah, on hypotheticals. It's all hypothetical. I've I've seen so many organizations and, and companies claim that their satellite's gonna save the world. Like the Skymuster satellites. You know, they, they said that it was going to be amazing and it was gonna bring fixed wireless speeds to any person connected to Australia. It didn't happen. Like it, it just it, it just didn't happen. It's not it would, it's, it's not a practical solution yet. It's yeah, no it's, idea. Yeah. It's better yeah. to look at pre-existing solutions, so then you can already get the research behind that, yeah. and then have evidence also that it actually works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This this might be good though for uh, the design consideration parts of the report, yeah, exactly. though, where we have to say things we've investigated. So we've already looked at uh, wireless mobile phone coverage. Yep. And yep. from everything Prague was saying, the feasibility of just getting, you know, towers spread all around Cape York is, it's ridiculous. It's not going to be a thing. And yeah, there's a ton yeah. of, you know, like we can throw these Telstra maps in there. We can say, you know, if you need 10 or 20 Ks between towers and Cape York's, you know, this many, 
hectares. It's <laughs> just going to be ridiculous. So it's, there's no way to fall back on that. Yeah. Then Especially we can with say, the population in Cape York. Is and yeah, people. that's it. If you did a feasibility you, study, towers. it's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'd be building towers, you know, and for you'd be a towers. ranger to drive past once yeah. every month. And you'd yeah. be building towers on traditional lands as well, depending on how close they need to be. Yeah, yeah. That's, and, that's and, that's and they may not like really that. Point really as well. Yeah, that. yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I'll yeah. take note of that one. one. Design consideration that we can oh. easily. Yeah, talk I mean, pe- people locally kick up a bus about a five G. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. Even you can be standing there with a fucking just a tool, and if they think you're putting up five G, they attack you. It's crazy. Yeah, and then so from there we can say, well, we also considered yeah. uh, Starlink because it it would be a perfect solution for this. It, it would be, yeah, it but comes in a box. You can yeah. unfold it. Yeah, anyone can fucking set it up. Yeah, but. It's well, it's not there, ready yeah. yet. The technology's not yeah. there. It's not going to be possible to roll that out for someone. So there's already two design considerations yeah. we've looked yeah. at, and then maybe um, from yeah, who has the touch sheet? Does anyone have like not the touch sheet, the ex- exemplar or anything? How many design considerations do we need? I'm assuming it's five or so. Uh, I don't think it had a number. I'll just think it had a number? try and okay. find it because I downloaded it to read yeah. yesterday. But... That could be something we ask him next to it. Yeah. I think next year know, you start, start going into your design anyway. Um, so fixed wireless was always going to be a solution and I was in the room when MBN Co talked about getting fixed wireless into every black spot across Australia. Uh, And the overall consensus was it's never going to happen in our lifetime. Um, uh, For those who are not familiar with uh, fixed wireless, is everyone familiar with what fixed wireless is? No, not really. Uh, So fixed wireless, as the name implies, is uh, it's like an LTE phone service, except you have a fixed connection to the tower. So you have a dedicated cell on the tower that is associated to your ODU and your ODU only. So you don't yeah. get fluctuations. You don't get roaming fluctuations or anything like that. So but what it's you not are physically physically fixed as in using not, a cable. It's just no, like no, a it uses, reserved address yeah. type thing. It uses uh, like yeah, a right. wireless network, like a wireless LAN. It's based on wireless yeah. LAN, but uses 4G LTE um, signal yeah. transmission. Uh, and it's yeah, basically right. a four-way phased flat antenna sitting in the ODU that just connects directly yeah. to its own cell. Uh, each tower has three cells. Each cell has 250 transponders. That's all you can fit in them. Uh, anything over that, and you breach the sort of the the signal, the signal cap, and there's too much information. You start getting cross feedback. Um, yeah. So that's you basically dedicated 750 people to a tower, and that's it. Uh, now I worked directly with Ericsson. My company worked directly with Ericsson to develop it. I came on board when it was in a cardboard box. They literally the the U, students at UNE, uh, University of New England, had put a wireless flat panel antenna inside of a cardboard box, and they said, "This is our solution." <laughs> <laughs> they, we, they didn't even have a mount. They had no way to even connect it to the outside of the house. They had, however, built the tower. The first fixed wireless tower went up at UNE uh, back in, I think it was 2009 or 2008. Uh, when we did the initial testing, we were aiming for 150 kilometers from the tower. Uh, by the time we'd done testing for two years across oh, nearly 2,000 installs across Armadale and, and the whole New England area, uh, we were down to 13 kilometers maximum. Yeah. And that's why fixed wireless never went to the black spots across Australia. Because oh, it okay. just wasn't feasible. It's sixty to $150,000 per tower uh, to put it up and just put the equipment on it. You can't put it on a Telstra tower because it's too close to the LTE 4G network and it causes signal interference. So yeah. you've got to cross mesh all your towers so that they don't come in contact with 4G at any point. 
Um, and the antennas themselves went from the idea of mass producing them for about 13 to $20 each, went up to about 350 to $400 each. So LTE isn't an option either. Um, you uh -huh. know, like your, your Ambien fixed wireless, it's just not an option. So looking through this uh, template, yeah, it looks like they want us to have about two or three alternatives to what we've come up. So it yeah, looks cool. like process pretty much goes, you lay out uh, the background and problem. So for us, it's that no one has internet access up there, uh, yeah. define the scope of it. So who yeah. we're looking at solving this problem for, which would be, you know, the, the people in the communities so they can run their businesses, et cetera. Then it wants us to show alternative approaches that yep. we've got. So that's where we can throw in, uh, you know, this Starlink, this the yeah. fixed wireless. Uh, and, you know, we, we could all even say expanding the existing uh, mobile network, but say all the reasons why those three just aren't going to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the lecture, there was a table where you kind of ranked, ranked like each um, option based yep. on certain criteria. And you could basically do a table there going, yeah. you know. That's what it's got in the template as well, is that table. Yeah. That's yeah. saying like criteria one and then why that alternative would even work or wouldn't, criteria two, why it would work or wouldn't, all those yeah. type of things. You could rank it from zero to 10 or color code yeah. it or whatever you want. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say for, you know, section one, section two, uh we're looking pretty good like we've got enough information that we can flesh those out so then it goes yeah. into section three which is actually coming up with the design yeah for us yeah, to so, flesh out and make it work so if we start with maybe an access point so we start with how we're we actually going to get access to the internet and then work our way yeah. down through the system from there so based on everything i know and everything i've tried to find out and update myself on over the last couple of days i still yeah. think skymuster is going to be our only viable solution to get high speed internet to whatever design we we want and i think yeah, so you... even even if we're boosting cell service and boosting signal service for phones and data i think it's still going to have to go over the internet as opposed to trying to connect to the existing telecommunications um, phone yeah. network yeah and just you just would do that it. yeah no you go there you go no no you go um just wanted to say uh, when we work out with our final design we're gonna make sure we because we got heaps of options here on how we can actually run it right like how we actually have the internet and how we implement it we're going to make sure yeah, with the considerations we talk about the certain components that we looked at as to re the reason why we aren't happy with that solution. Yep. If that yep. makes sense. So then that explains our actual design as to why we're doing it this certain way. Yep. You'd be considering the social, economic, and environmental factors. Yeah. Is but it's also things? like exploring the actual the internet service, the thing that design we want to implement. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So exploring the reasons why. Yeah, um, and like specifically towards the actual design itself and like the different nuances of the design. Do you know yep. if that makes sense? Yeah. Yep. Hey, uh, yeah, quick cool. question. Yep. What exactly is LTE? I'm kind of trying to figure it out. Just yeah, okay. Um, so LTE, oh, I can't even remember what it stands for now. Uh, so you understand that uh, 4G is what connects your phone? to the tower yeah. LTE is the, um, uh, the the signal that connects your phone to the direct tower let me fucking let me just pull it up um, long term evolution I don't think that's the correct LTE <laughs> oh no it is long term evolution it is that's yeah, it's a weird is it, that's, that's it's not what we used a, to call it 
the protocol, isn't it? That it all talks. Yeah, on. protocol. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. Um, I know we shouldn't use Wikipedia as as a source. But I can't be yes, bothered no, trying it's, to. It's a good backup. <laughs> I mean, um, it's a good backup to to get to get um, you know basic information across. Uh, we've been using it for now for about twenty years. Uh, so three G started out as a form of LTE, um, and then when they doubled the bandwidth on three G and it became four G, uh, it sort of it it developed into LTE. And then of course when we use the MBN system. Um, it it's just it's the fastest type out there until they developed 5g uh now i'll be honest i don't know that much about 5g specifically because i've never worked with it it's sort of come out after i've left the industry um but i do know that it is capable of incredible speeds and i've been connected to it and i was getting 450 mbps on my phone it's also very restricted it is um, yeah like not only the amount of people you can have a talk on it at the same time, but the distance it can go over and interference as well. Yeah, yeah. So you you can get those huge speeds, but because but, you're still limited by how many people can tap into that in like city areas, that's why they have to have so many different towers is to handle the amount of people who are going to be talking over those towers at the same time. Yeah, and it's also the distance that it can travel on those speeds as well. So yeah. again, as, as I mentioned before, every time you double the bandwidth, you halve the speed. Um, Ericsson was actually the, the company, as far as I'm aware, Ericsson was the company that developed it, which is why it ended up in the NBN system in the first place. Um, and I know that it was, I, I wasn't a part of, of that side of it. Uh, but there was, you know, a really big rift forming between Ericsson and Telstra because Telstra was basically using their technology um, and they were allowed to do it, but they weren't supporting the MBN. And so for the first three years of fixed wireless, um, Telstra just wouldn't, just simply wouldn't support MBN Co in any way. They wanted nothing to do with it, even though they were using the technology that Ericsson had developed. Didn't they do that so they could basically um, lower the price of it and buy it out or something oh, like that? Look, possibly. As I said, I, I didn't. I wasn't really paying attention to that side of it. I was just more on the technology side. Yeah, no, that's cool. Obviously, that's why they did it, though. Is this all then leading back into why we're deciding that it's going to have to be uh, communications done over the internet through this SkyMaster satellite? Yeah, Because through... all this stuff isn't feasible out there? It's just not. That's the issue. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the only... I mean, sure, if you could get an investor that's happy to, you know, invest several billion dollars in, you know, putting up a tower stream, sure. Yeah. You know, go nuts. Um, yeah. I guess at the end of the day, you would only have to technically put up 17 towers but the communication between those towers would probably be where the 90% of the expenses because your um, high, uh, high broadband microwave transmitters, don't quote me, I think they're limited to about 75 kilometers these days, uh, maximum. And, and even that's too much, like that's too far for for the LTE yeah. side and and for 4G and it's definitely for 5G. 5G requires fiber optics at the bottom of the satellite. Yes. Yeah. So if we're if we're then going to say that this SkyMaster thing is going to be <coughs> our solution to this problem, yeah. what are we actually going to design for it? Is it just going to be the network infrastructure to get it done and then is that actually going to suit the requirements for this? Like cuz we've well, got to design I, I, I think it is so one of the limitations to satellite obviously apart from latency which i don't think there's really anything we can do about um is getting multiple users on it so yeah. although it wouldn't be incredibly fast internet you could take the satellite service connect it to your own 
um, 4G system, 4G broadcast system, and then broadcast 4G omnidirectional, omni, omnidirectionally for about 20 kilometers. Uh, you can do it for about 30 with the right equipment. So if you put up one satellite or maybe two satellites um, sharing two routers connected to a 4G LTE network in the center of each community, you could then broadcast an internet signal over 4G up to 20 kilometers across the entire community. Yeah. So what, then, what, <clears throat> what we'll be designing then isn't so much. We're, we're not going to design a bit of kit that you go out there and you set up and say, hey, this is going to fix your things. We're more designing a way to get SkyMaster to talk to these communities. Is that what we're getting at? Um, let me pull up this. This might make a little bit more sense. Can you guys see my screen all right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so this picture here, these are 4G antennas, and they're basically, yeah. it's a mini Yagi phase system, which has mm -hmm. one transmitter on the left when you're standing behind it, and one receiver on the right. Um, you can link the communities together with that system. That system alone, I think, can travel up to about 100 kilometers. Uh, yep. You could daisy chain it. You could daisy chain it, yeah. Or you could put up individual satellites in each community, which were probably already there. I would be very surprised if there's not at least one Skymaster connection in each community already. And you could um, work directly with the local councils there, and you can broadcast from the council building, wherever that council building is. And as long as they don't have to pay for it, they are usually more than happy to support. Now, from that antenna, you have flat panel data, which is this little G, it's called a G spot. That's a data panel that allows your phone to connect directly to the internet via 4G. Um, and this is the phone booster, which actually, uh, uh, basically transmits what a standard phone tower would transmit. Um, that is basically what you'd see on the side of the, the phone tower, and it's a cell. And you can daisy chain cells together in a circle and broadcast out about 20 kilometers. Yeah. And that's what it looks so like. Our, and they're not expensive. Our design, our design solution then would be to get these and install them in those communities correct yeah yeah well I'm, I'm yeah this is just sort of this is the technology that's available um yeah. and and one of the things if you look across here on the right um it it splits the system up into data and phone so it kits both of the things that we're aiming for so we can get internet uh, and we can also get mobile phone repeaters all off the same system right in the center of town just broadcasting out and all of a sudden people's phone work um, and they can use their phone again that's sort of appropriate access like appropriate technology but for people who are tech savvy they could then turn their phone into a modem and connect their computer to it. So most, yeah. mo and I think it mentioned in the brief that most people up there have a smartphone. Yeah, it did say that. So if you could uh, teach the community how to use hotspotting, yeah. it's, it's possible, it yeah. And I could, I can't imagine that an organization like EWB can't go to an organization like NBN Co and say, here's our situation. Can you provide unlimited data via your satellite system? Shit, they're almost planning on doing it anyway. Like late 2021, they're planning on dropping the data cap for over 90% of... 90% um, of internet access is now not going to be capped. So that alone is going to change the system. But surely, 
NBN Co. would be willing to work with EWB and provide unlimited access via these It'd satellites. Be good PR for them. With fantastic PR. Jesus, they need it. I'm not yeah. sure that's part of our design, whether we mention that in the design, but, you yeah, know, it's... That, that, that could be a reason why they go for it. Yeah. Like... So, yeah, rather than, yeah. rather than connecting individual properties to the internet, we basically yeah. put up an internet broadcast station at each of the council chambers. Yeah. To tap into it. Now, this entire system, I can buy for about 200 bucks. Yeah, so it's cheap to... It's not expensive. So yeah. 70 times 200. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In comparison now, of course, to, like, some of the costs you come up with for towers and what. Yeah. Yeah. And you only need a local communications installer to install it. And I can guarantee that there will be there will be, be some technician days. yeah, up there installing Foxtel. I can guarantee it. Um, especially considering Foxtel can now actually be broadcast there. For many years, you couldn't get Foxtel in Cape York uh, because the footprint, uh, because the satellite, the C1, C3 satellite sat up above... Um, sorry, the C1 satellite, I should say, set up above Papua New Guinea and its footprint covered Australia, but it didn't quite hit the Cape York. And so if you wanted to connect it, you needed to put a really massive dish and face it directly at the sky, like straight up. <laughs> and none of the mounts, all the mounts had to be customized and custom designed to actually be able to tilt uh, a satellite dish back that far to connect it to the satellite because it was just wasn't in the right spot when they launched the c3 they put it behind the c1 and further back towards russia and now you can get foxtel in cape york the the, the footprint actually hits you still have to face your satellite dish up a fair way i think it sits on like 13 degrees elevation or something which is virtually straight up um but you know, at least you can do it. That's just a little bit of trivia for you guys. That doesn't help us in any way, but I just thought I'd mention it. Yeah, so I just found, I'm going to do a bit of research. I've just looked at a uh, telecommunication review that was done in rural areas. In the, district of Queensland. the communications are covered here. So it's, like, it's a bit old, it's 2012, but it looks at ways and the issues and what things have kind of been implemented or looked at being implemented and that sounds a like a good on. website yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a file that i found i can link it but 2012 yeah. is still relevant yeah um i don't know if that link will work but that's the link i got it from that so works, and, and yeah. it also looks at um some of your recommendations on like how it can be better delivered to those rural communities as well there's heaps of recommendations. There's like a whole couple pages, two, three pages on it. That sounds like an epic. That sounds it's, like an it's, epic it's website. 40,000 words. It's like a 40,000 word report. Yeah, nice. page It's eight. a government report. Yeah, page eight is a summary of recommendations. Oh, yeah. Nice. And yeah, 2012. 2012 is still plenty relevant for technology. Yeah. So, page eight. I'm just gonna have a just kind of had a quick squeeze at it. Kind of had a look at what's going on. This is a government body as well, so it's it's a good source to have. And it just it goes into like existing some of the existing communication services that are there and some stats as well. And then safeguards and like repairs and well. Yeah, okay, nice. It goes into a little bit about pay frames, which are not overly interested. But yeah, there's some there's some stuff. In this. Yeah, that's a good reference, actually. Like government reports, twenty even like mid two thousands would still be all right. I think. Yeah. Obviously, the more recent, the better. But I mean, yeah. it still hold true. Look, technology as far as, as far as communication speeds are concerned, haven't really changed. 
Like 4G was the last jump, and I'm not even sure how long ago that was. When was that? When did 4G come out? I'm not sure. Is there, <laughs> is there a way to link this system in with the um, uh, that CFAT hotspot thing? Because I'm just reading through the well, actually, the CRA would, it, for this it would, one. It would uh, replace it. It would replace it because it would allow multiple users to connect to the same system <laughs> for the distances one thing that did i did consider is if you can get that system to yeah. get one phone to work why can't you place a directional antenna where the phone would sit and then link your system directly to that to a multi-phone system so you basically take that to a signal repeater Why does it have to be one phone? Why can't you put even a flat panel, Multiple. like a little flat panel antenna that works like an LMB? You guys know what an LMB is? It's on the end of a satellite dish, low noise blocker. It's it's what takes a signal and uh, downgrades it to a signal that doesn't make your devices explode. <coughs> yeah. I did not know uh, that until now. Because one of, so one of the parts of the CRA, uh, that's worth 20%. So in the design options thing here, it says, yep. uh, uh, where was I just reading? Final design is clear and con is clear and comprehensively explains a direct link to the findings of the design process. Uh, and then it talks about a link one second then i'll find it yeah 4g came out in 2009 4g and lte yeah here we go so wider ewb relationships uh so this this part's worth five percent and says that linkages and relationships to other ewb projects and design areas are clear insightful and creative uh, and contributes to a holistic approach to the EWB challenge and long-term sustainability of the design. So is there a way that we can talk about how this links in with other things that are going on out there? Well, to be honest, I think um, as... Like, if you wanted to link directly back to the cell system, then you would need yeah. to use the system that they've implemented already. And I'd be interested to run an experiment to see whether you could use a flat panel antenna and create a cell repeater on the backside of the satellite dish. Um, and then connect multiple phones to it instead of just one. But that would be an experiment. That would I'm not I'm not entirely confident that would work. But by connecting directly to the broadband side and yeah. using phone over Wi-Fi or cellular over Wi-Fi systems, uh, it would actually replace the systems they've put in. Does anyone know what SDG stands for? No. What's that, sorry? SDG, Sierra Del Delta Golf, because it's talking about in the final design, we've got to link to at least two SDGs. Sustainable like, um, Development Goals. Sustainable, uh, okay. yeah. sustainable development goals. Oh. So it'd be like just self maintenance <laughs> for one. I mean, from what Craig was saying before, the biggest attraction to this design is that they're only a couple hundred bucks each. Yeah, very, yep. very cheap. Um, yep. and if and if you wanted to tap into the fact that there's four G. Flat panel antennas yeah. getting pulled down Australia wide at the moment and getting replaced with 5G system. It means that there's a surplus of secondhand equipment that you could very well pick up for free. And that would just be taking advantage of the 5G rollout. Yeah. So then, with the, because you were saying these uh, transmitters, was it 20Ks is the range of them? Yeah, that's, that's the ones I showed you. You can get much, much more powerful yeah. ones. But you lose and data over that distance. Yeah, you're sort of you're sort of how limited. Far away, yeah, how far away from these central hubs or all the outstations? 
that they go to because from what oh, i yeah, wrote in my yeah, yeah, stations go for study, hundreds of kilometers yeah it was that so they all live in these like central locations which are those 16 communities uh, yep. during the the wet season when they can't get anywhere else yep. and then during the dry season they all go and e- expand back to their traditional lands yep. so in one of the areas up there it was saying that during the dry season um uh what was the name of the community it was um port port something up there um, they could spread out to where you just get a handful of people about four hours drive in every direction. So if that's, you know, 400 Ks, then are we then going to have to limit our scope of this to say we're going to aim to give better uh, mobile phone and internet reception in those local communities, not yeah. in the outstations? Yeah, I, I, I would... I would probably, I would probably say that. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if, you know, if the solution to getting data and signal to everyone was so simple that six university, first year university students could solve it, um, it would have been done 40 years ago. So it's kind of let's, you know, let's, let's push it, let's be creative, but at the same time, let's be realistic um yeah there's there's a lot of space up there yeah i'm just trying Mm -hmm. to go through this cra and see yeah yeah Yeah, whether what we've decided on is actually going to like meet the requirements of the report yep do you reckon so if if i've ah i'm I'm not sure i think it's something we should probably ask Corey about at the moment because if if i've wrapped my head around what we've said tonight um well enough is that um, there's a bunch of different solutions we could go for, whether it's um, fucking Tesla's thing, the Starnet, yep. or fixed uh, wireless that you were talking about before. Yep. But none of that feasible because it costs a ton and it's spread over too high of an area. Yep. And Skynet isn't ready yet. Starnet, yep. Skynet, whatever. Yep. Um, so that's why we're looking at this G spot thing that you were talking about. It's cheap. Yep. Um, it can send it for 20 Ks, but again, because everyone is spread so far around these communities, we'd only be looking at expanding the internet connectivity in those regional hubs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's that part there that I'm not sure whether that misses the whole yeah, point of this because the then you go yeah, back yeah. to the uh, EWB design brief and it's saying that for 2021 they're looking at helping all those remote indigenous communities expand and get back out to living off the land and all of this yeah. is supposed yeah, to be true. targeted at giving them the infrastructure in those regional communities so if we're then going to say that we're just focusing our scope of this on those yeah. regional hubs the thing is which it's cheap. Already- like it, it, it yeah. is a really cheap really easy to implement system like a satellite dish yeah. is like 20 bucks uh the lmb is probably the most expensive thing for the sky mass. that's like 350 bucks uh maybe yeah. 350 i don't know how whether it's gone up or not um why why can't why can't we create portable systems why can't we create a trailer so and put the system on that, a trailer? That portable system, that's more of a design. So that's yeah. something that we could then, you know, grab by the balls and say, all right, cool. So now we're looking at a trailer that's going to have a receiver to hook us yep. up to the solar panels, the sky master. Solar panel on the side yeah. to power. Yeah, and you, you it, could it implement- doesn't necessarily have to be solar panel it could hook into their bush light system which they've already yeah set up. yeah yeah yep. and you just plug so it straight then, in yeah so if if we were to go down that kind of path then i think we're targeting the cra a bit yeah better. okay yeah, so yeah we're saying look I like we're it. gonna we're gonna have a box trailer that's gonna have this type of receiver on there so it can yep. talk to the star master satellite yeah. Then we can say, all right, well, from the spec sheet of this receiver, it's going to need, you know, so many fucking kilowatts of yep. power. And we can yeah, say yeah. that the uh, bush light system up there, which they've already put in a lot of these outstations, 
will be able to handle it. So that's the power thing done. Like that's that's more of a something concrete than that we yeah. can grab hold of. Well, but that's I don't that's know just it. Like I'm you could. Point. No, I don't think you are. I think I think you just I think you just fucking nailed it. Because if you did create an unportable system, because they're going on about how they want you to use more things in the area, like making use of the resources in the area. So where are we going to get those resources in the area? Because that's what they're banging on about today. For uh, yeah, okay. Well, well, speaking, speaking of that, so the second PDF I've put up there. So there's page 60 to 61, it talks about what is actually already implemented and what the government wants to implement into the, into that area. So we can specifically have a look at that. That also goes into uh, stakeholder opinions, like the Aboriginal's opinions on infrastructure placement in certain areas. And it also goes further into infrastructure placement as well. So that document there is pretty good. It also talks about working with that community as well. So... Mm. We could have a look at what's actually implemented if you go to page 60 to 61. Yeah. The second document there that I've researched. So then maybe something for this time next week is we can have a chat to Corey in the tutorial next week yep. and just say, hey, this is what we're thinking of. Is yep. this in line with the report that we actually have to write? Yep. We can look at what already exists for those outstations from what Darcy was saying before. Yeah. And so we, we can, can also, see. Sorry, you go. No, no, go on, man. I was going to say, we could also look at, as one of our design considerations, look at, instead of creating a completely new system, we could look at yeah. upgrading a system. Yeah. And have that as a design consideration, something tiny yeah. that we just, if we want to, if we need to add more considerations in. Yeah, so maybe, maybe yeah. what I was suggesting before, like replacing the single phone server system that they got up there uh, with yeah. a system that may potentially allow multiple phones to connect to the same system, something yeah, along exactly. those lines. Yeah, exactly, just like small fixes that you yeah. can have a look at and then get positives and negatives and consider them. Yeah, yeah, use some, use some fancy words and yeah. some photos. Yeah, smack and it together. Boom. We well, can We're, use as, uh, on the existing options as like a means to coming up with the final solution that we propose. So you could essentially build on expanding, you know, more than one operator on like internet and then yep. you just build on it to like satellite towers and whatnot. Yeah, satellite towers and portable trailers that can broadcast 20 kilometres in any direction to where they're parked. Yeah, like like the alternative operations could just be building blocks to the final one. Yeah. So where do you want to go from here then? So we'll have that chat with Corey uh, yep. in the tutorial next week. We'll look at what already exists for these outstations in terms of their yeah. wireless service. So that's yeah. the CFAT hotspot. And we'll see if there's anything else. And look at the actual, look at the actual technology. Yeah, yeah and then we'll, we'll have a look further into this Sky Master, Star Master thing, yep. and just see whether or not that is then going to be the design consideration we go yep. with. Yep. But at the moment, it sounds like we're looking at using Sky Master with some kind of receiver in those regional outstations. Yeah. to hook into the Sky Master and then broadcast it through those. Yep. And make make sure we, like, cover our scope, like, who we want to um, attract or, you know, like, our scope to Corey so he gets the context of oh, yeah. what's on. Oh, we, we should have done the team. Do we have do we have the updated team mix? Minutes? No, but we Lighten's haven't recorded. That. Oh, yeah, so. is he can, he'll be able to have a look at it anyway for us. I think he's got the updated version. Um, so what I'll do is I will... I will put it up on my YouTube channel, and I'll just put it up as a private video. And then I'll just yeah. send you guys the link, and you can... If you want to watch it, or whoever needs to watch it, I'll just send the link up. So I should have it up by tomorrow. 
Yeah. So maybe for the tutorial next week, um, if we have a look at those things we were just yep. talking about, um, and then in the tutorial next week, we can go through the task sheet for this report and just tick off like all the different parts. Yeah. And you mean, sure you mean the CRA? Uh, not even the CRA, just the just the task sheet. So there's the template, which oh, I much haven't even tells us how to lay it out. Yeah, I haven't even looked at those things yet. I haven't got that far. Yeah, right. The, yeah, so I'll have the a look at them tomorrow. The task sheet itself kind of breaks down exactly what we have oh. to do. And yeah, that's cool. where I'm not really sure whether we're hitting the mark or whether we're kind of answering a different question. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a bit All of right. a look tomorrow. And, um, yeah, yeah, cool. Right now, I just want to go to bed. I've had about two hours yeah. sleep, so <laughs> I'm fucked. Yeah, no, and now I'm meeting six me as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm yeah I'm I'm happy with where we're at. We've kind of got a direction we want to go in. Now we just got to flesh it out and see whether it actually answers and, the question we're asked. Yeah, and just check with Corey once he gives the okay, then yeah. we can start actually um, assigning roles and yeah. start getting into a draft yeah. report. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll be able um, I'll be able to provide. Uh, all of the communications, specifications, cabling, um, yeah. Yeah. losses, all of that sort of stuff, hurts, yeah, hurts like ratings and shit like that. People that more know about the communications side so probably be better looking at possible design implementations and like writing that section. Yep. Well, yeah, Obviously, we can sure. help with research, but the people with like that good background knowledge that know what they're talking about with like you know all the all those all those fancy words and. <laughs> Yeah, hell, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, me and Jason pretty much have sense. that in spades, so we got yeah. all the fancy words. My yeah. my communications background is totally different to this kind of stuff, man. Like I was a radar and weapons technician, so we yeah, had but other you still understand it. You, went, you still understand how waves work, and you understand how the communications protocols work yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, so. I, I can follow. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to help, of course, but no, just. Just a suggestion. Yeah, it's, yep. it's a good idea to put our strengths yeah, into definitely. their strengths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like the others, like myself and the others, we can, we can always help. We, you got, we can help with like intro, you got conclusion, and you got some design considerations. Some we stuff. can help out with the layout too of information. So you guys could come up with it, and then we could go, okay, maybe we could put this in a table or do a diagram or something. Like something small like that, just to. <laughs> Enhance yeah. the whole report. Yeah, and I feel yeah, like sure. some of the design considerations can be spoken about. Like you've got, yeah. you can easily talk about how spread out the community is in relation to tower placement and the amount of towers we need, depending on the quality of internet or the speed. Yeah. Of internet. Just well, all, like... all that that kind of stuff's all targeted in this design options section, which is section two. Yep. So that's where we say all the considerations we came up with, alternatives we evaluated, uh, a recount of our selection process, which is what we just went through tonight. We can flesh that out into the decision matrix. So pretty much tonight we've covered section two. Section one's just the laying out the context. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, the introduction, yeah. I reckon we could probably get two people working on that at a time, like two people together and trying to yeah. flush that out properly. I feel like that's probably the best to work in this. Yeah. Then yeah. Got, yeah. Got yeah, that works. Then you, got, then you got another brain to kind of pick ideas off. off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then making sure you're, you're actually looking at the CRA properly. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that that's the part we're going to have to be careful about, which is why we'll have a chat to Corey next week. But I think we're on the right track with it for now. Yeah. I yep. think so too. And Leighton can watch the recording. Yeah. Mm. Oh, cool. Everyone happy? I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'll um do some research on existing designs and whatnot. Yeah. If anyone gets a bit of time to go through some of the stuff I've gone through. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely go through some of your documents in the research section. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Uh, the government reports, so they're really good. All right, we're calling it. Cool.
Everyone's yeah. happy. Yeah. I'm yep. gonna go get on with my life. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Enjoy your life. <laughs> we did. I'll catch you guys next week. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. yeah see you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Good one. See you.